consider to pre-planning your week. Two ideas out of the ordinary to start implementing that I've started implementing in my life and I've seen massive results in my personal life and in my business. What is the deeper meaning of me creating this business? Why do I want to project out into the world? Hi, Jasmin Basson. Do you dread Mondays? I want to suggest that you haven't found your Ikigai yet. Your Ikigai is that beautiful Japanese word for your passion and your purpose and the reason for waking up in the morning that's bigger than ourselves. That's right, something that's really bigger than ourselves. In this 2020 motivation series, new decade, new you, I want to suggest and provide you with potent ideas and habits to achieve a life that you adore. In this very first series, I want to give you five potent ideas and lessons that I learned very, uh, very late in my life as being an entrepreneur. And the very first idea that's really a game changer for me, learned from one of my mentors, was to pre-plan my week. Pre-planning your week consists of taking chunks out of your week and your day and focusing on specific idea, jobs, uh, goals, whatever you want to achieve, you need to block that out into your diary. I use an old school diary that I still write in. It works great for me. I obviously use electronic devices and electronic means of, of doing things as well but I start I'm still being the old, in the old school way of still writing in my diary and actually chunking out specific time slots in my diary for specific things that I need to do. To give you an example I'm an accountant as well I'm having an accounting practice since 2006 and before that been in the accounting practice for almost two de decades right now and I started realizing that I need to chunk out specific times in my day to attend to specific things and one of the things is early in the morning I would sit with my team a variety of people in my team and go through the previous day work previous days work going to the planning for the, for this week for the day and for this week and be there mentor them and exchange some ideas so that is a specific portion in my day that i would chunk out and know i need to attend to and the second idea that will happen is i would chunk out specific times that we do pre-bookings with our clients so in an accounting practice we do a six months pre-booking for all our clients that's interested in doing that and in that we chunk out every month that specific time for an offline meeting or an online zoom meeting and make sure that us and the client attend to it and see each other at least once a month game changer on its own for clients we see massive accounting results on a monthly basis and also being there for them as being a mentor or business coach and just being there as a soundboard to them for, for potential new ideas that they may have for in their current business or potential new venture that they want to, to, to run, by, run by us. Other things that might be in my uh, pre-planning of my diary is, or in the pre-planning in my diary would be to chunk out certain times for going into nature me and my wife, on every Tuesday evening, we go to Palm Mountain and we walk in nature and enjoy all the benefits of, of just being in the company of each other and also enjoy all the benefits of, of being in nature. There's so much, a lot of science around being the benefits of being in nature. Every morning, and I'll get to it a bit later as well, but I would... 4 a.m. I would do some exercise. I chunk, I chunk that specific time out in my diary at 4 a.m. I know I need to be there and I chunk it out and I do specific exercises that I've pre-planned for myself. Another thing very important is to chunk out specific times spending time with my family. Um, I think in the current world where we are we are so distracted with all kinds of things including cell phones 
that we tend to forget that we need to spend time with the family really connecting with them what I what I like to do is when I get home I've got a business phone I've got a private phone and the business phone being staying at, at work or I, I leave it at work and we switch out of everything that might distract us and we're just having a nice dinner to, uh, with each other and we just talk about the day I think it's something that we especially entrepreneurs we tend to focus so much on creating and building our business that we tend to forget and I've been there in my life to forget that you need to attend and take care of your family as well and spend quality time with your family as well so part of your pre-booking for the week is if you have to chunk out some time to spend time with your kids spend time with your wife or your or your spouse your husband and really just make sure that whatever you want to achieve that week you actually write down everything that we schedule will become a reality every vague goal that we set for ourselves will give us vague results so start pre-planning pre-planning write down every chunk of the day write out what you need to do chunk it out in your diary and you will most likely in my case i've seen the results you will be less busy being busy and start focusing on the important stuff that you need to do and potentially your daily five the very five important ideas that you need to do for this day to be a great day further to the idea of pre-planning your week just two out of the ordinary ideas that i started implementing in my life as being an entrepreneur and i've seen massive results in my personal life as well as in my business and the very first idea is to pre-plan pre-plan a weekly massage you can pre-plan it for the next month two three months but make sure it's pre-planned it's chunked out in your diary the very first idea is really just to slow you down to force you to slow down as being an entrepreneur and just want to be on the go 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 i'm there as well i need to force myself to do specific things and that's why chunking out times is great because it forces me to do certain things at certain times going for that weekly massage it takes away distraction from everything and doing that lowers my cortisol by 31 percent the fear hormone that i assume if you're in business you know what i'm talking about lower that lower that fear hormone lowering the stress and the second thing is elevates serotonin the feel good hormone that will ensure when you get back to the office you will be so much more creative and so inspired to start building your business again and just be there for your for your clients the second thing i started doing was going for a monthly energy healing session game changer for me in my personal life and in my business i've really reached new heights in my personal life and in my business by going for a monthly energy healing session something i block out every month and something i know i need to attend to so before you freak out which most people that is something out of the ordinary and most people tend to freak out or being confused about the idea of an energy healing session but what it really is is we have a lot of block chi block energy in our body and us trees animals most in nature consists out of energy and we tend to block certain things some things we know we're blocking but it's sort of hide away and we put a wall in front of us or around that specific subject and going for that sessions with a practitioner all these kind of energy blockings and things that we need to work on actually came out come, comes out in these kind of meeting or, or sessions so what the practitioner does is she works according to a variety of chakras and whatever she feedback she gets by using a intuition she gives you that feedback and all these feedback and all these pieces of intuition that she receives you can use 
and start elevating ideas and elevating your life according to working on that specific thing. Not sure if I'm making sense. It's not my subject of expertise. Number two of this episode is fear is a liar. Fear is a liar. When you run into it, it will always run away. To step out of a comfort zone is difficult. If we have the courage to step out of a comfort zone, to step into the fear, we will always see beautiful results on the other side. May it be a beautiful result in the sense of something you gained or win, or just something, a failure that you can learn from and have the opportunity to learn from it. Either way, taking that first step to run into your fear, you will always see beautiful results coming from that if you open to it. I know so many talented people but are afraid to start a business that they always wanted to do. Start pursuing your passion and your purpose and even if you need to do it part-time, take that first step, even if it's small steps, take small steps that can later get on the big leaps of steps and jumps. Take that first step into your fear and of your comfort zone and run into that beautiful place and a beautiful destination but you will never know if you don't try if you don't take that first step and the first step is always very difficult something that i started doing because we need to prepare our, our, our subconscious mind for conditioning it to to run into fear because consciously it's easy thing to say i would run to i, I would run into my fear I would go out of my comfort zone, but when it gets to practice, it's a bit more difficult. And we are subconsciously conditioned not to do that because of limiting beliefs coming from our past. So I want to suggest to you what I started doing to condition my subconscious mind to run into fear and, and be comfortable in running into my fear. And one of the things I started doing was to take a 6 a.m. cold shower. I was always, as a kid, afraid of cold water we've always been to uh, hot hot water baths um, didn't like the sea didn't like to swim in cold swimming pools and two years ago i decided to run into my fear and start doing ice cold showers in the summer and during the winter and subconsciously train my mind to be not to be afraid of fear and to run into my fear. You might have other ideas or other means of conquering your fear, create courage to run into your fear, create something for you to influence your subconscious mind to start be comfortable in running out of your fear. Another great story about fear is a liar. We sometimes take our kids to a play park. In this play park, they've got these massive high um, obstacle courses uh, where they put a harness in, or you in into a harness and you walk on these variety of steps and all kinds of weird things that you need to walk on quite high and and, and what happened is that one day we've been there and I also somehow start uh, uh, developing a, a fear of heights and I thought to myself well I need to conquer my fear of heights because I never used to be like that and so I got the honors in it was very difficult for me in the beginning my heart was beating terribly and uh, I got to do the first section of the course and getting easier and easier for me and at the one point I had to wait for a little kid that was also on this and I could see in his face he's, he's, he was so anxious and he was so scared so I was standing there on the one side he was halfway through the one um, uh, obstacle course or obstacle piece of the course and I encourage him to come one step closer every time and encourage him he's doing great and every every step he came closer to me the, the, there was a smile coming through um, and eventually when he came to me he was actually smiling it was like a high five to him and it's like he was so awesome you're great and about two weeks later we went to the same play park again and this by accident the same kid was there as well and 
I went to him and I asked him, have you been on this obstacle course again today? And he told me, yes, multiple times. It's so easy now for me. So it's a very good example of, of fear is a liar. That very first obstacle course is massive. Your heart beats, and if, especially if you're afraid of heights. And when you, when you see the, take the first step and you see everything is okay, you take the next step. And as you progress in this obstacle course, you eventually see that everything is okay. I can manage this and it's actually not that bad as I thought it would be. So find something, whatever you're scared of, or find just find something like my ice cold shower every, every single morning. Find something that will prepare you and condition you to be comfortable in running into your fear on a daily basis. Idea number three is exercise first thing in the morning. I start training at 4 a.m. in the morning for quite some time and it's amazing time of the day to start training you release serotonin dopamine very first in the morning first thing in the morning you lower your cortisol the fear hormone that i've just talked about uh, and uh, previously you release an amazing protein called bdnf brain derived neurotrophic factor it's a protein that actually repairs damaged brain cells and it also will assist you to be a lot more creative during the course of the day. And why would I want to suggest that you as an entrepreneur need to do exercise? For the benefits I just told you and I just mentioned and also you as an entrepreneur want to be with your family for as long as you can and you want also want to serve your clients for as long as you can now the great thing about waking up at four i've got a morning routine of from four to six and the first portion of that generally the first 20 to 30 minutes i do exercise and and this is not the topic of the day but for you to have a motivation of waking up early in the morning and experience the greatness of the morning and the stillness of the morning and just the wow of of the morning is to have a motivation of waking up. I've got a variety of motivations, but one of them is to stay in top notch in my, in my health wise. So my training clothes would lie ready for me in the morning and I wake up at four and by five past four, I'm dressed up in my, in my clothes. I've got no excuse and I'm out in my gym, just out, outside of the house and I've, I've been a martial arts instructor for almost five years. So when I started, when I resigned as the instructor um, about five odd months ago, I actually write down in my journal exactly every day, at least every second day, what I need to do in my morning fitness or training schedule. So I've written a variety of things and I'm 40, I've turned 40 um, late last year and I realized that I need to keep myself fit and sustain myself to be in top health for my family and for running my business and be of value for as long as I can. The amazing thing about, about, about training is that after that 20, 30 minute, 20 or 30 minutes that you've trained, that you are so inspired to start working on the rest of your morning routine. It may be journaling, it might be gratitude in your journal. It might be training online course, reading some books to get new ideas. You can even use that time to start that part-time business that you always dreamed of doing. A lot of us have this idea of this uh, excuse of not being able, we don't have the time to create the business that we always wanted to. You can use that time from four to six in the morning. You start training, you are in, inspired, you're on fire for the morning for the rest of the day and you start to work on that part-time business that you always wanted to create. So if you haven't started training yet, if you at this stage in your life where you're an entrepreneur, you're driving your business like mad, but you haven't give attention to, to, to your training and to your fitness and to your health, start implementing a daily fitness session for you. You can only be, don't make the excuse of I don't have time. There's amazing heat, the bata, AMRAP kind of training that you can do 
and have amazing results in 15 to 20 minutes. Idea number four is find your ikigai. Your ikigai is that beautiful Japanese word for your passion and your purpose and the reason for you for waking up in the morning that's bigger than ourselves. So a lot of us, I started accounting practice. I'm in accounting industry for almost two decades now serving accounting clients and entrepreneurs, SMEs. And I've got a variety of other businesses that, that I'm involved with. And I always thought I'm creating businesses. I do, I'm a passion, I do I really do have a passion for whatever I do. But I never thought about the deeper meaning of me creating businesses. What is the actual purpose? What is the actual reading, re, the reason for me creating businesses? And after very reflecting a lot and really going deep into my soul, and my art, I realized that I've created all these businesses, but to be an inspiration of hope, kindness, and, gener and, and be an uh, example of being generous. And something I realized that that's something that's always been part of me, I just didn't realize it. So, having an accounting practice is definitely my, per my, my passion, creating other businesses is definitely my passion. And I love doing that. And definitely don't do it for the money. A great tip, don't do it for the money. Do it for your passion and do it for the purpose. And money will always flow if you really find your passion and really follow your purpose. So if you want, if you're on the verge of creating, of starting a new business, really think deep about, do I create this business only for money or do I create this business which is part of my passion I really love what I'm going to do it's just not another business I really love what I'm going to do and what is the deeper meaning of me creating this business what do I want to project out into the world do I want to create hope kindness generosity do I whatever I want to do what is that bigger purpose that you want to achieve through creating your business. Point number five and the last point is educate yourself financially. You can be an amazing entrepreneur working very hard and have this amazing business idea that makes a lot of money. But if you don't budget and to start investing in, in specific assets, then you will in the long term see no financial capital gain in your business or in your personal capacity. Speak to a financial advisor, speak to an accountant, educate yourself, use any means possible to utilize any money that you make from your business to create, start creating assets in whatever form works for you. If you want to get in touch with me, you can click the link below. I've been working with accounting clients and entrepreneurs for the last almost two decades. Be in contact with me and we can set up a Zoom call. Now, just because you've been in this video for this long, I will give you a bonus, Id bonus idea. Point number six is get a mentor, get a business coach. The same as a personal trainer that you appoint to not necessarily show you new ideas and new fitness, new ways to do a dumbbell lift or whatever the case may be. A personal trainer is there to help you reach specific goals, keep you on the track of reaching your goals. And the same as a mentor or business coach. Business coach can be really just a soundboard of someone you meet on a monthly basis and really just discuss a few ideas and just be the soundboard of giving you a few opinions about, about your idea. One of the great features that we have with part of our monthly accounting services is that we see our clients on a monthly basis. We have pre-bookings with our clients and we discuss with them their financial results and the, the state of their business. But also, we, we are there as a mentor or a business coach and they can reflect on their business. They can share some ideas that they might have for, for their current business or some new ventures. And we are there as a soundboard and just giving a few opinions or a few ideas related to that idea of them. A business coach can 
further, it's the same as a personal trainer can assist you by dotting down a few goals and also assist you to actually achieve those, those specific goals in a specific time. Thank you very much for watching. Please remember to grab your gift bag for entrepreneurs to the value of 57,000 Rand free of charge in the link below. This gift bag for entrepreneurs is for South African entrepreneurs and part of that gift bag is a three months free monthly accounting services from our company Drake Holdings. We want to give you free value for three months to the value of seven and a half thousand rand. Grab that gift bag for entrepreneurs right now in the description. Thank you for watching. Please remember to subscribe to this YouTube channel.